Hello and welcome to TIFF. My name is Andrea Picard and I'm one of the programmers here. And this is the Q&A recording for Intregalde by Radu Muntin. And I'm very happy both to be presenting the film in this edition, as well as to be here with him for this Q&A. Although he can't be here in person, we have extenuating circumstances this year. But Radu, thank you so much for, for being here. Andrea, thank you very much for inviting the film, and I'm I'm happy to be uh, at this Q and A online. I would be, of course, even uh, more happy to be there in, in Toronto. I have really great memories about my my previous uh, selection there. Mm -hmm. And we've also shown some of your films at the Cinematheque before, so you have sure. many viewers here. And uh, I think I've said this to you before. Um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about this film. It was one of the first films that we wanted to invite this year. It kind of has a simple premise, but then it's so complex and all of the things that it kind of insinuates and the way that it changes and morphs. And like all of your films, I feel like you put your characters through a test and then we get to see people's real behaviors and personalities. This is your seventh feature. I believe it's your sixth collaboration with your script writers. Uh, Razvan Rescue and Alexander Baku. And I think you had mentioned that um, this film had been percolating for a long time. Like I think you had done research a number of years previously. So can you talk about just the genesis of the film and why you want to talk about these expeditions? Yeah, well, uh, the first time I, I thought about this was uh, I think 10 years ago when I found out about this uh, uh, expedition clubs, the four by four off-road uh, clubs that uh, normally they are doing uh, off-road contests, but once a year they want to give something back to the to the society, to the community, and they are organizing expeditions, humanitarian expeditions in, in remote places in uh, Romania, the villages where uh, people are living very much apart, uh, mm -hmm. one from another, and uh, all of them. Uh, to the the I don't know the main connections the stores and the, the supermarkets whatever so it's really hard for them to uh, to get to the 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 food for example to uh, to get some food so they they organize they kind of make the the play the Santa Claus for the the villages uh, and uh, I was intrigued by this and I, I thought that it's a good starting point to uh, to talk about uh, generosity and uh, the resort, the, the motives of uh, generosity. And uh, uh, yeah, I went in, in two, these, uh, two expeditions, two humanitarian expeditions with Alex and Razvan, the two co-writers you mentioned. Uh, the first one is, it was in 2012, and the second one, I think it was in 2015. In the meantime, we, we were trying to, uh, to write the script, but it didn't work for the first time. We decided to to put it in standby the the story and we did another movie Adisti, mm -hmm. and then uh, after the second expedition we we managed to uh, to finish the script and we uh, we shot it last year in the in the lockdown action. Uh, those are difficult circumstances to begin with to shoot with, but then also you have the landscape, which is so unpredictable. And also I'd like to talk about uh, Lucas Saban, who plays Kente, because you have actors. I know I, I, you've worked with some of them before, and there's such a symbiotic relationship. And then you have this kind of risky move that you pulled in casting um, someone local who just kind of fits in. So can you talk a little bit about the casting choices and the dynamic between uh, the four of them. Uh, sure, for the the main characters, the the three uh, uh, people from the town that are in uh, that uh, that are part of this expedition, I uh, I was sure that I was going to use actors. I had uh, Maria in mind, Maria Popistache for the main character, and uh, uh, I casted the other two. Uh, but for the this old guy, the the, the local. Uh, I was uh, sure from the beginning I, I will need a local to mm -hmm. to act. I, I, I could not uh, imagine that I could use an, an actor for, for this because I, I kind of uh, wanted this high level of uh, authenticity from, uh, uh, from this character. So uh, I, I didn't imagine a, a, an old actor who, who, uh, who had an experience of maybe 40 years or more of theater uh, doing what Lucas Sabin does in, in this film. So, uh, yeah, well, this was a, a risky choice, uh, but I, I was really lucky to, to find this guy. 
when I was location scouting. Yeah. When I was location scouting in, in uh, Rumet, actually the, the village I, I, I shot uh, most of the, the scenes, uh, he was out there. He was uh, with some, uh, some friends going to the, the, the church. Uh, so I, I found him. He was happy to, to shoot. And uh, well, it, it, of course, it was a long process. He had to learn a lot of things. It was the first time he even saw a camera. I mean, you have to imagine that these people are really living in remote places. But he had, uh, he's really smart. He's really fit. So uh, somehow um, he looked fragile like, like, the, like the character. Uh, but he's not actually. <laughs> so uh, he's uh, uh, he's somebody who uh, who I can I could work uh, with, and he understood uh, from the beginning that he's not playing himself. Although he did uh, uh, tell me some some stories, and we inserted it, uh, the stories in 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 the script. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's playing another character. So uh, that was a, a really important distinction that that. I, uh, I I wanted to to make from the beginning. I want to talk a little bit about the tone of the film because I think this is why it played on me for so long. You know, it starts off seemingly with a convention of almost horror. You know, people getting stuck in the forest. Night is approaching. There could be potential danger. But then the rapport between the three of them is funny. They're super witty. You know, snarky with one another. But then there's these little tidbits in the script, you know, um, where uh, I feel like there are attitudes towards either the Roma or queer people, uh, poverty, uh, elderly folks. So it's just, it's so rich while also being funny and very fluid. So can you talk a little bit about the tonal shifts in the film? Yeah, sure. Uh, we wanted to to play a little bit with all these uh, cliches, with all these conventions about uh, the, the actually the prejudice of, of the of the viewer uh, who is uh, uh, who is used with the, the the cliches of the conventional blockbusters. Uh, uh, because we were talking about the the preconception of of this main characters about the locals about the people they are interacting with so this was the the parallel that that we intend from the the beginning and of course the uh the, I, I think i'm not I, I i'm not ready to label my movies uh in any certain way that i don't think they are, they are genre movies but i think if you want to talk about life life is full of uh, uh funny things and full of uh, uh, drama and tension and all these kind of things that so mm -hmm. you uh, you should uh, you should find this in a in decent movie <laughs> if you want mm -hmm. uh, but yeah the um, the cliches of the the, the threat of uh, of a, a horror movie or uh, something really bad that's going to happen in the forest was uh, was on a on the back of our minds when we when we wrote the script we wanted to play with the prejudice uh, the prejudice of the viewer and the, and and the characters as well i mean it worked i jumped at a certain <laughs> and reached and then also laughed um, but let's talk about the landscape for a moment. And um, you can just sense how remote it is. Also, it gets really cold, but it must have been a challenge to shoot there as well. Yeah, it was. Um, from the beginning, I, I had in mind after the, the scouting that, that we, we made in the, in the real uh, humanitarian expedition, that the, the, the nature could, uh, should be a part, uh, a character in uh, in the movie, like a, almost like a bean, you know, uh, uh, because in the, in the beginning of the movie, you, you can see the beautiful landscape and it's really pleasant and nothing you could imagine that it, uh, nothing wrong could, could happen. Uh, it's beautiful uh, and uh, soft and everything. But then you go to, into the forest and the uh, forest became frightened and, and it became uh, really like uh, somebody was crushing you uh, little by little. And it, it became a reflection of the, the fear of unknown uh of the of the character and then in the morning it's uh, uh it, it's snowing and it's all white and so mm -hmm. it's a it, it, it's a way of positioning yourself against something uh unpredictable and uh still mysterious and uh, eternal in a way 
uh, not like Kente or the old uh, sawmill or, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's a relativization of, of our uh, position here in, in the world. Uh, so it was, uh, it was important to find a, a, a nature that is changing a lot and is becoming a, a character. I, and I think that area, Antregal de Rumetz, uh, uh, in, in Romanian mountains, uh, it's really uh, what we were looking for. But of course, uh, it was tricky. It was not supposed to, to snow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were not expecting this, but we uh, finally we decided to 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 work on that, and I I think it was the best uh, uh, for the movie to do this. But it was difficult to uh, to maintain the, the that level of snow because it it was uh, melting very fast, and then it was really cold, and so uh, and uh, almost all the time it was a lot of mud. Uh, some of the locals didn't want to show up eventually, so we all, we we had this really unpredictable uh, situation uh, during the shooting. But uh, all, in, in the same time, it was something that we enjoyed very much, and uh, we we are like in a bubble there. Uh, mm -hmm. Everywhere around us, it was uh, it was lockdown, and we could be in this isolated place in a in a in a safety bubble, doing what we loved. So. We were we we had this this feeling that we are in the best uh, in the best situation in the best place for uh, given the circumstance. That's great. I want to talk uh, also a little bit about the camera work, which feels so alive. And something that's also so great about the film is that there's a lack of judgment. You can almost adopt anyone's point of view. You can understand their frustrations. You can understand their wants and desires and their intentions. And you're not judging any of them. And I also feel like the camera, which is like in the car and alive and very much a part of the world of the film kind of replicates this multiplicity of points of view. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good observation. I think uh, uh, this is the, uh, the film I, I, I was trying to experiment a little bit with the perspective of storytelling, because until now I was on, almost all the time with, with one main character. Uh, here, uh, I think the camera moves a little bit apart from from this really subjective uh, perspective. Of course, we are with Maria. Maria is the, it's it's our main character, but it's mm -hmm. like a it's like uh, it, it's it's not. Sometimes we see from uh, from a distance what's going on. It's like the the perspective of the place of the 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 uh, the nature of something else. Uh, and even in the end, we abandon a little bit uh, Maria to, to stick with, with Kente, who is also a representative uh, uh, of, of, of that place. Uh, and, and we wanted towards the end to, uh, to put uh, the spotlight on, on Kente because I wanted the, the viewer to feel a little bit of empathy towards him. Mm -hmm. uh, to feel like he's a human being, not like a human carcass or uh, uh, somebody really non-important. Uh, he had a biography, he had a life, you should feel something about him. Although he will be very soon vanished and he will be like the old soul mill uh, in, in the forest. Uh, so yeah, we played a little bit with, with this perspective, using, uh, using Maria as, as, as a centerpiece, uh, gravitating around her, but not, um, not taking her own uh, subjective perspective uh, while telling the story. And why did you include yourself in the film? Because you had been on those expeditions? <laughs> not really, <laughs> not really. I, this is actually my second experience as an uh, as an actor. I, I did act in my previous film, and I, I I really enjoy this experience because I I get to be really immersed in the in, in the shot, and uh, it's I think it, it's helping me a lot to interact uh, better with the, with with the actors and uh, this this change of perspective uh, of course it's a little bit tricky because you for for that moment you are in the shot you lose the the bigger picture uh, the the director perspective mm -hmm. and it's tricky uh, and it was even trickier before because we I had to drive and I had to be part in this uh, uh, um, 
I don't know, com complicated, uh, choreographed uh, scenes. Uh, but it was interesting. And I, I, I knew that I was going to, uh, uh, to act. And I, I thought that it's ironic and funny to be, uh, to act like uh, the, the, I don't know, the leader of the expedition <laughs> who <laughs> is doing almost nothing to help them uh, uh, when they need. Well, that leads to my next question, which is about the actual aid that they provide. You know, you get the sense that it's like corn puffs, and then you get this amazing line at the end from the older woman in the village who says, do you want real coffee? Or do you want the <laughs> coffee that you've been providing, which is kind of not real, you know? Um, can you talk about just yeah, I guess the quality of that aid and how you inserted those little tidbits into the script. Sure. Uh, I think basically one of the main points of the film, it's talking about the generosity as a part of a personal project, if you want. Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm not judging uh, anybody who's trying to help even in a small way. I'm just questioning the fact that some of uh, these humanitarians thought that uh, uh, they are changing the lives of, uh, of, of, of the locals without knowing uh, enough uh, what, what kind of life they're into. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, think it's, I think it's okay to do it for yourself a little bit, uh, but I think it's, it's important to be lucid to, to know this not to have the feeling that you're doing something really big and you're changing destinies. Uh, uh, so that was, I think, an important part of what we were trying to uh, to put on the table. Because, as you said, I'm not trying to, to judge uh, uh, any of my of my characters. I just try to put some myself some some question and so uh, to invite the audience to to do the same. Yeah, and I think that that tension also comes across when we start thinking about do we only help people when we're actually comfortable ourselves? Exactly. And then when it becomes really inconvenient. And in this uh, situation, they could also be in danger, you know? And would they still be willing to help in those circumstances? So that's why I think I spent so long um, thinking about the film because it just, it's, it's actually quite complex and can be applied to so many real life situations. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's, a, it's a nice exercise to try to defend uh, each uh, character, uh, you know, to be like the, the defense lawyer, if you want. Mm -hmm. So I, I, th I think I can do this. I can find arguments for Maria, for Dan, for uh, Ilinka, for, uh, for everybody in, uh, uh, in the film. But you, uh, you have to be honest with yourself and, uh, and, and think... And I think in the end, it was more relevant for Maria that he, uh, that she helped uh, Kente, that for Kente uh, himself, uh, yeah. in a way. But I think for all of us, it's uh, even in a bigger picture, it's, it's uh, this moral standard that, that we have, although we are thinking about ourselves in the same time, I think it's important to men to for our species. To, this is the the, the thing that uh, distinguishes ourselves from uh, from other species. The, the fact that we we cannot let our uh, our kin uh, in 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 danger. It, it's I mean Maria says it's it's a line. I, I'm I'm sure it's it's not even uh, very clear in that uh, very uh, tricky scene when she's uh, she's going to the sawmill to to get the old guy. But she's saying, I I wish I I, I didn't know that he's out there. But now that I know, I cannot <laughs> exactly just stand stand here. It's it's that. <laughs> and also, when you think about, I mean, when you help people and you feel good about it, if we all did that, would the world be a better place? Right. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I would hope so. Um, we're already out of time, but um, I would like to leave you the last word if there's anything else that you would like to say about the film that we haven't discussed. No, I think, I think we, uh, you know the film very well. We already discussed it. Uh, I'm really uh, thankful for, for your help and for, uh, I'm really happy that, uh, uh, that I get to, to have the film uh, in Toronto, you know that this is one of my favorite festivals. I already told you that. 
so I just hope that the, the viewers will uh, will enjoy it and will find it interesting and will we start raising uh, some some questions about themselves. I'm sure they will. Well, we're really really pleased and honored to show the film. So thank you so much for your time, Radu, and uh, hope thank to you, see Andrea. Bye. I hope to. Bye. Ciao.